when we when we take our fine aviation skills and we put them to good use here on the Not Your Average Show show, we do it with the perspective of looking at what's going to happen for future and future trends. And that means when, whether we look at something like um, Jobby Aviation or something else, we, we like to keep updated on their things that, that are moving in their marketplace, especially ones like Linlium and so on and so forth. Now, with Jet Up Terra, there's something that's different that's going on here, and it's, and it's worth noting. Jet Up Terra is a different type of company, and the fact that they're not using public seed money at this time or ca- venture capital money at this time to go through their active process of developing their technologies, which led a lot of people to, I don't know, unsum- unceremoniously kind of blow them off in one of the videos that we'd said that they were the, the, actually the flying car of the future. Some people even pointed out that their technology is not even proven or they said that their technology wouldn't work. Well, got some bad news for you folks out there that are doubters. Currently, uh, <laughs> if you're going to pick a company to, to, to jump into bed with and you're going to go into this particular market, uh, Jet Up Terra actually back in January 28th of 2020 announced that they had a collaboration with Honeywell. Now, if you're not familiar, Honeywell is mm-hmm. probably one of the most competitive yeah. jet slash engine slash component makers in the aviation marketplace outside of General Electric or some other major players, okay? And they do have technology that has been a force to reckon with uh, along those uh, lines. And one of the other things I think that people are kind of discounting is the fact that Genoterra is taking a different approach to their study of making the new version of flying car UAS that we all might enjoy in the not-too-distant future. However... They have mm-hmm. taken this opportunity to put a lot of their research and development information on their website. And if you don't take the opportunity to look and explore it, you're going to miss out on some pretty amazing achievements going back all the way to 2016. So rather than dismiss them as a fly-by-night corporation, I, I invite everybody to go and take a look because a lot of people that were harsh and critical of the fluidic propulsion system don't really understand that when you're taking this type of venture where you're not taking the traditional propeller and VTOL environment and exposing it to the same types of things that people have seen before in, say, the Osprey or something of that nature, and you're stretching not only the legs of an existing but a future technology, you have to make different inroads into that environment. And it goes without saying that they have already made massive, massive, massive leaps forward as far as flying versions of their technology that are proving that at the very least, as the way it stands, they have used FPS in its current design state on various types of aircraft to prove that it works. Okay. And this is just, this is just from their website, just to give you guys an idea. This is a glider using the propulsion system that Andre and his company have at this point, I'm going to call this a perfect demonstration of a product viability. So it goes without saying that, you know, look, I know a lot of people are skeptical that when you have a new foundation entry into this marketplace, I'm going to stress one thing to you very, very, very succinctly. That is, they have taken inroads with joining up with military groups. They have the prime backing of already major players in the aviation industry. They're taking it from the perspective that they have the technology and their fluidic propulsion system that will definitely improve, if not the quality of flight. It will definitely reduce the noise volumes and it can definitely sustain flight. And they're going a much longer road to having to prove that this is a viable uh, company and a viable technology. Because other companies don't really have to do that if you're just gonna take blades and put them on a propeller, right? Uh, So with that said, I think it's time to make a little bit deeper discussion, Corey. We've talked about this many, many times on the channel. These guys have more inroads that they've got to make. However, if they actually make it through these other stages, which I'm going to say, which are their final stages, I think they're still going to become the major player. 100%. That's it? Mm -hmm. So you got us, uh (laughs) uh-huh? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I did yeah, I'm done. done or whatever, but <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, so just to just expand on a few things there, Mike said they made some uh, some some a partnership with a number of players, one of which is being Honeywell. That's to be honest, this that isn't actually uh, recent news. Uh, just to kind of put some things in perspective, Jet Up Terror announced their collaboration with Honeywell back yes, in January yep. 2020. So actually, this has been something that's been going on a while, and it's a bit ironic. I know we made a. a um, 
a, a mention when we first talked about Jet Up Terra and we were kind of brainstorming Mike and myself before we'd really dug really deep into Jet Up Terra's uh, past. And we had mentioned to ourselves, I, I think maybe me or one of us said, you know what would be a really good application for this if you had some off-the-shelf mm-hmm. APU that's already like a proven power plant that would serve the function as uh, either centrifugal uh, force generator, whatever it might be for this application. And then uh, actually, it's funny enough, um, uh, we got a comment on one of the videos from uh, from the guys at Jet Up Terra that said we use APUs already or something like that. And then, uh, yeah, now going back through, you can see that January 2020, they had already um, uh, collaboration with Honeywell. And even in that article, that, that uh, news release from them, it talks about APUs. So like, oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, it's just kind of interesting there. But um, I mean, there, if you go back slightly further, that see, that was January 20, January mm-hmm. 22nd, 2020. But if you go back January 10th, they have another one. They talk about a company called uh, Accutronic Turbines. It looks like it's a German company. And it they also have uh, something with them as well. So, I mean, um, and that's for their Dash 200 uh, um, right. aircraft. So uh, that's a specific application. And and like Mike mentioned, and I think we've said it before too, they had uh, they've already been to partner with the U.S. Army, and then I think was it the U.S. Navy? The Navy, they were doing their, their uh, audio studies the as Force. well with the U.S. Navy to make sure that they were going to work something as else well. for the Air Force. Yeah, but there's been one or two, well, certainly two, maybe more studies on how quiet that that is. And I know we've mentioned before that one of the big blockers for, well, not just helicopter mm-hmm. pads in general, but any kind of aircraft that uh, is kind of VTOL in nature. Uh, tends to make a bunch of noise and one of the blockers for anybody or any business that is nearby such a ground station or vertiport is noise people don't like really noisy aircraft uh you know right out their door and that's not surprising uh but uh to have something that and i think we said what 15 or maybe up to 25 decibels uh quieter than helicopters that that's that's nice. Uh, and then it says even down to, uh, uh, yeah, if they're up at now 300 meters, the FPS would produce less than 50 Which decibels. Which is the quietest known to man. Uh, even before noise abatement. Significantly less than the 65 decibel goal uh, that uh, communities kind of, and studies communities typically want. So, Well, Corey, while you were talking, I was I running mean, a video yeah. in the background. When you were talking, I was actually running a video, oh, right? Okay. Which basically okay. shows okay. that their VTOL actual version that is running side by side with with some of these other actual they they use some ducted fan engines in comparison to the vectoring fluid or propulsive thrusters and just to that note when uh when we were watching that as you were speaking claudio popped in there and said hey what's the difference between the fluidic and similar size power to weight comparable traditional option now there's a big difference here is the fact that the the actual shape of their fluidic propulsive thrusters is should be a 10 time force multiplier over traditional means meaning that by using and and this is proof in these actual videos by using one centralized actual APU device is what they've got on this this frame right here they're getting the same amount of thrust as if they're using two elected electric ducted fan engines okay now that right yeah. there is almost proof of concept to say look if they can use that this one centralized propulsion unit and it's taking and producing the same amount of thrust as these two electric ducted fans, then guess what, folks? It works. It's flying. Get up Terra's flying. Yeah. And it's got a numerical yeah. superiority advantage in the fact that it can use one device to power the entire aircraft. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny you were showing that video with the, uh, the mm-hmm. ducted fan or the EDF along with the fluidic propulsion system right next to it, because, you know, obviously Claudio's comment, I read it right when you were talking about it. Um, and I think one thing, maybe we can try to bring up the illustration again uh, of the way the fluidic propulsion mm-hmm. system kind of works, uh, just as a basic thing. And I can talk a little bit about it as well, but um, if you guys are, and I know, just bear with me for a second, but if you guys are familiar with um, the Dyson yes. floor fans, you know, or, or an oscillating, oscillating floor fan that you can buy from Dyson, uh, if you've ever really looked at one, actually, you'll know that the uh, impeller, as it would be, it brings the air in from the base. That's where the actual components are that uh, bring the air in and then blow them vertically up. And if you've looked at the actual, like, 
top of the fan, you'll notice that it's 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 a funny it's a bit of a funny design if you're not gonna kind of looked at it before. And the way the way it works, it blows the the air up into this tube, and then the inner side, the inner diameter of that tube has the exit where the where the actual the air comes out. And the way it comes out of there, it blows it a particular direction. But the way it does it, it's almost as if the 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 fan shroud is a Correct. airfoil in the sense that when the air you're forcing out of the airfoil from the inner diameter towards a direction, it that obviously makes some fan, uh, you know, that you can feel and it cools you off. But because of the shape of the fan itself, it's actually making lower high pressures around the, right. the shape of the shroud itself and actually uh, inducing mm -hmm. more air into the airstream that it's blowing out. And so what you get is you get kind of, uh, you get a, a bonus of, in this case, more, more air. air blowing <laughs> on you without having to have it go through the actual duct, without having to go through the actual impeller itself. So you, so by using some aerodynamic effects around the, the shroud, by using its shape, you can induce, it's called air inducement and air entrainment. That's actually the two, um, uh, terms that are being that they are they're harnessing and that same those same exact concepts actually air entrainment and air inducement is what uh the fluidic fluidic propulsive Correct. system is using so uh i don't know if you found I didn't a, find that, a, that a one graph. i didn't have it's up but it, to, it, you know just to just yeah, to summarize but yeah. basically what's happening is in, in the physics sense and everything else is <clears throat> hey folks it's flying whether 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 or not you're going to accept the fact that this is going to be a major player Eh, that's not our problem so much. We just bringing it to you. <laughs> that's about it. So uh, it should be real interesting, though. I look the 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 model. I guess the Jet Up Terror two thousand is the one that I want to fly. It's the one that I have my eye on. You could take all, if somebody you know said, "Hey, you want to go fly a Lilium or a Javi?" I'd be like, "Yeah, that's cool." Like I'll go fly it because I know the technology that's in existence there that they're using is basically proven. But Jet Up Terror is going there. Look, and and these are the strides that you have to take. It's going to be quieter. It, it's going to have other advantages that others won't. It's going to use off-the-shelf components, and it's going to have a proven background when it's done, and I think that's going to be a major win. So, hey, there's that, right? All right, so uh, that is that for Jet Up Terror. Remember, like, subscribe, and follow. And I guess the last thing, what do we have to talk about today? Uh, we were going to talk Paint. about some... Pretty cool paints. Uh, it's a bit of a, a oh, bit yeah. of a change. Uh, you want me to go with no, that? No, you're or doing you it. Go with I'm that? not doing it. Hold on, I got it. Okay, cool. Give me yeah, one second. So, I got to get yeah. everything straightened out here because I had like 60 different browser windows open before we went to the last topic. Sure. All right, here you go. It is all your 